Welcome! In this video tutorial, we want to introduce you to one of MaxQDA's visual tools, the Code Matrix Browser. This tool gives you an overview as to how often certain codes can be found in your documents. This is a very useful feature not only while coding, but also to test hypotheses or to present your findings to others. Let's create a new Code Matrix Browser. I begin by selecting the entry Code Matrix Browser in the Visual Tools section of the menu. A window appears that displays different options. In the upper part of the window, I can choose what appears in the columns. I can either display individual documents or whole document groups or document sets. And if my project included a focus group transcript, I could display each of the participants as a column in order to compare their contributions. For this example, I will stick with the default setting and display the documents individually. In the lower part of the window, I can first decide whether I want to visualize all documents and codes or only those I have previously activated. In case you have assigned different weights to coded segments in order to differentiate between relevant and not so relevant content, you can use the following option to display only segments with a certain weight. And if you check the last option, each code will only be counted once per document. For this tutorial, I have activated seven interviews and a couple of interesting codes, and I'll visualize them now by clicking on OK. The Code Matrix browser opens up. At the top are all of the activated documents, and on the left side are my activated codes. If you have a lot of documents, or some with rather long names, you can adjust the column width by clicking on these blue buttons over here. Whenever a code has been assigned to a document, a square will appear at the respective intersection. The size of the square depends upon the number of coded segments that are to be found in this specific document. The higher the number, the larger the square. Looking at the Code Matrix browser, I get an impression of some characteristics of my data, both in regard to single interviews or codes and to the project as a whole. I see, for example, that the code health was being used rather often in the interviews with John, or that the code siblings can only be found in two interviews. I can also choose to display coded segments as circles or as numbers. I'll stick with the squares for now. When I hover with my cursor over a square, a tooltip pops up, telling me how often the code has been assigned to that document. The Code Matrix browser is directly linked with the original data and interactive, so when I double click on a square, it will show up the corresponding coded segments in the list of codings window. I can also export the whole matrix with all coded segments at once. To do this, I simply click on the Quote Matrix button and save the Quote Matrix as an Excel sheet or text document. Let's go back to the Code Matrix browser. The more often a code has been assigned to a document, the larger the square. By default, the size of a single square is determined due to its relation to all the other squares in the matrix. This comes in handy if you want a general overview of the distribution of coded segments for all codes and documents. With these buttons over here, I can change how the size of the squares is being calculated, giving me the option to take a closer look at the code distribution within individual interviews or individual codes. To focus on the distribution of codes within a single document, I switch to calculation of symbol size refers to column. Now, the most frequently used code within each interview gets the largest red square, and it doesn't matter if the same code was used more often in a different interview. If all the codes appear with the same frequency, a blue middle-sized square will appear. In the same way, I can focus on codes and visualize in which document a code appears the most often by switching to Calculation of Symbol Size Refers to Row. Now I can see in which document a code appears the most frequently. Let's switch the display to numerical values instead of squares. In a code system with codes and subcodes, you can collapse the subcodes to show you the sum of coded segments for a code and all of the subcodes. 
By clicking on the sum symbol, you can display the sum of coded segments to be found in a certain interview or code. For example, I see that the interview with Kim has 8 codes and that the code health had been assigned 22 times. In some cases, the frequency with which a code occurs might not be relevant, but only the question whether it appears at all. In this case, I click on the button Count hits per document only once. When I collapse the code people now, I can see how many of the subcodes had been assigned in the different interviews. I can see, for example, that Kim and John only speak about two categories of social relationships, while Alexander and Kelly speak about all four of them. I can reduce this view even further to only display whether one or more subcodes of a code appear by activating the binarize option. Now I only see whether a code or one of the subcodes appear, no matter how often. Let's come to another important topic. If you want to use the code matrix browser in a presentation or report, click on the export icon and save the current window as a PNG image. MaxQDA creates an image of the entire code matrix browser, including the documents that might be outside of your current view. If you want to further process your data in a program like Excel or SPSS, export in the same way and choose Excel or another suitable file format.